Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. And before me, I have my one side of my warehouse. And today, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an overview of what I've been doing these last few months. So the last time I did a walkthrough video, I had these two units. I actually got the unit across the street and I turned it into my manufacturing. And I'll give you guys a light uh, you know, preview of that. So first, we're going to enter brand new showroom and I'm so proud of this it's not 100% done yet but it's uh, it's getting there so I moved everything over to getting nice cabinets uh, so that way at the end of the day in a couple months every uh, cage will have their own unique misting have their own misting system unique to them allows me to have specific vitamins for each one directly underneath the cage that way uh, their nutrition is specifically catered to them so I guess you can see up the top here, uh, I have some new paintings. So these are actually originals. They were done by a 13-year-old girl. And I got them at a, at a local reptile expo here at the, a couple months ago. So as you can see, for starters here, I have my pair of corn snakes that you guys are all familiar with. And I want you guys to take a look at this substrate that's almost 10 years old. You see tunnels everywhere. Right here you can see waste being broken down. You see some shed in here being broken down. And these guys are just doing great. You can see the ferns in the back took a little bit of a beating. Uh, but other than that, they're still growing strong and doing okay. Typically, Nagini and Fierce are out, but I think they were fed yesterday, as they should have been. So uh, they are probably in their dens digesting. Down here, I have my, my oscillated skinks, which I know you guys are also familiar with. So you can see one of them in here. Can I, oh, hey dude, what are you doing? Oh, I know. Oh, you can take out another one back there. So these guys have bred for me many times. I actually have some babies on hold for a, uh, a young man named Matthew. So hopefully these guys breed again soon. And we go over here and we have Java. And of course, Jabba's out, so Jabba's my Rococo toad. So the reason I got Jabba is because when I was younger, I had a Rococo toad for years. Uh, and she was the size of a dinner plate, and she would eat hamsters and mice and other things. So I saw Jabba mislabeled as a marine toad. So I paid $5 for a, for a toad. That's worth a little bit more, a lot more actually. And this 75 tetrafauna is Jabba's enclosure. She has nobody else in there with her. The substrate is uh, it's about three years old now. I've had Jabba for a long time. Uh, oh, in, in you go. I do give her a hot spot because I've noticed she does like to come up here and bask. I do also provide her UVB. And you can see the numerous plants I have going in here. Uh, she does, of course, have the Miss King goes off. It goes off for about a minute and a half a day. And then up top here, I have my tomatoes, which I'm very happy to have. So you can see one of them right here. Oh, he's getting mad. He's all puckering up. There's two of them. There's another one there. Oh, there's three. Look at them all bumbled up together. And then we got we got Bertha back here. I I I gotta get her out. So the thing I love about the about the tomatoes is not only do they kind of squeak like your Pac-Man stuff, but if you rub them enough, they can secrete a toxic goo that. If you ingest it, you're going to have a bad time. So there, of course, my bio shot and roaches and everything else is in here. Uh, the tomato frog substrate. I don't know if you guys remember the video of the 24 by 18 by 18 that I built for these guys. This is that same substrate. And as I upgraded their terrarium, I just added more. Uh, and these guys have been doing great for me. I have a group of six. I will probably breed them at some point, especially since they're now on sites. Can't import them anymore. Next over here, you can see my chameleon tree pouch in the works. Uh, that's, this tank has been going strong now for about eight months. And I have my falsy in here. And he thought he was doing so good at blending in. So I originally purchased two of these guys. I unfortunately lost the one about two and a half months after getting them. I honestly don't know why. They've been wormed, uh, you know, given best nutrition, but I'm not really sure why. These guys can be pretty delicate. But I love their cryptic coloration, and they definitely are a great anole species to keep. I do have uh, 
not only does their Mist King go off twice a day, but they also get hand, he also gets hand misted an additional twice a day in here just to make sure that he has those humidity spikes that they, that they, that they require. The next over here, I have my cinnamon tree frogs. I purchased my cinnamon tree frogs uh, as wild caught group of six, six years ago. Uh, since that, that group of six has populated to about 60. Uh, I have then subsidized that population a little bit and I sold a couple groups to some fellow froggers um, in the area. And now there's about 45 of them in here. Now the cinnamons, they're doing great. Uh, let me see, yeah, yeah, I can grab one. So I do have a small filter running in here. This is 100% water bottom. There is no land in this aquarium, in, in this terrarium whatsoever, except man-made rocks and other things that I myself have, um, or rocks or whatever that I myself have put together. But here's a good look at the cinnamons. This is actually a pair right here. So if you look here and here, you can actually see the eggs. Whereas, and then here you, you can see the male. Something I've really always enjoyed about the cinnamons is that they're transparent underneath. So check this out. That is so cool. And when and at, at nighttime and when we come in first thing in the morning, the best part about our day, my well, at least my day, if I come in early enough, is there'll be dozens of them spread across the front here, just calling and doing their thing. It sounds like a marsh. It reminds me uh, when I lived in Pennsylvania, all the spring peepers. I miss that. Um, over here, I have my emerald, my breeding group of emerald tree skinks. I say breeding group because I found a baby in here. Uh, I'm not sure where the baby is right now. I had him out yesterday, and he's been acclimating really well. He seems to be a little bit more shy when it comes to uh, being around the adults, but he's not afraid to bask. Um, we are upping the misting on them a little bit so the baby can get hydrated. I did not pull the egg, which means that there are probably dozens of eggs in here uh, waiting to be hatched. So I'm really looking forward to eventually offer some captive board emerald tree skinks to some Houston locals here in the future. It's really, really exciting. Over here we have my Chinese gliding frogs. And uh, you guys have seen these before. Uh, you saw me build this tank. Here's an update on that tank. I added a couple pieces of wood and everything's doing pretty good. So here's, a, here, here's one of my male Chinese gliders. What I love about these guys is that A, not only can they jump extremely far, but they can glide like a flying squirrel. And they are able to utilize this adaptation because they have webbed feet, if I could. Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. Did you hear that? Yeah, he's mad. So, you know, you can, kind of, you can kind of get a look there. I did breed these guys last year. Um, they are foam nesters, much like my Borneo ear frogs. But I lost the tadpoles within three days. I don't know if it was water quality. I don't know if it was me not supplementing the parents enough. But hopefully next round, I'll have a little bit more success. And then my pride and joy are my Cubans. Um, these are my Cuban Idanoles I rescued. These guys were actually rescues that I uh, purchased from a reptile show in Pasadena that these guys were this big, skin and bones, dehydrated, and now they have turned out to be, you know, for the most part, big babies. But get a little mad when I, you know, miss with them. But, you know, they stay relatively calm. I have dealt with many Cubans before and they always try to rip my face off. These guys just try to get away. I am fairly certain that I have a pair. Uh, and this is the only pair that I keep in, a, in this enclosure. If they do breed and I do find some babies in here, I would have to immediately yank the baby because the nobles can be pretty territorial. <clears throat> territorial and pretty aggressive. And of course, everybody's hooked up to a Miss King. Um, I have this side. This Miss King controls this side and the other side, which you guys will see shortly. The last one I want to show you is Kane. Now, I'm not going to mess with Kane because he um, is actually having a little bit of issues right now. You can see him over here. Uh, he's currently going through vet treatment with my wife. Um, his cage is actually usually put outside every single day uh, so he can get natural Texas sun. But today, 
uh, just for the sake of the video, we just gave him a, some extra misting and are gonna leave him be. But he's, uh, he's another rescue that I got from a customer who did his best to take care of him, but unfortunately, as you all know with, with chameleons, if you don't do everything just right, the little things catch up. And now all those little things have caught up with him and now I'm just, you know, getting him healthy and comfortable, but you know, um, his time is unfortunately coming here. So we're gonna keep going on out here. So out here, I have all, a lot of my different branding and inserts. As you know, I do all my own branding, all my own, uh, you no know, type up everything. So this is where my staff comes in and makes sure that everybody's order gets the correct thing. So we'll keep coming out here. Bathroom's in there, y'all don't need to see that. So here is my shipping and here is my shipping station. Here you can see one of my full timers. His name is Buck. He's been with the Bio Dude for a little over a month. He's been doing a great job. He is one of the guys that goes and gets all these orders together for us and making sure that they're as right and on time as possible. Buck at least looks and say hi. There we go. There we go. All right. So I ended up uh, upgrading all of my boxes. Uh, since I switched to FedEx, my rate of getting stuff messed up has gone down significantly. All the boxes I use are double corrugated, have a crush rating of at least 250 pounds. This helps prevent damaging to your products, and this also helps making sure that my stuff is arriving to you the same way that it leaves here, and that's really important to me. So we have all the different types of boxes, and then we have specialized tube shipping, for your Arcadias and your other sensitive uh, lights and stuff. And then we're gonna go over here. I have more shipping stuff over here. I have my super duper craft paper. So instead of using shipping paper, I use craft paper. This stuff has a 550 pound resistance. So not only is this the, the toughest stuff that you can use to ship, it also makes sure your boxes don't crumble apart because it keeps them nice and structurally, nice and structured together. I have a bunch of cork bark here. Uh, I've been getting my cork from Panama. Uh, or excuse me, not Panama, Portugal. I've been working on that, and that is a, that's a headache. But I always have a good amount of tubes here. I have big tubes, little tubes, small tubes, and of course your flax. But I have a bunch of uh, the flax over here. I go through, you see this big bin of tubes and this big bin of flax? I go through each bin every five, six days, Brandon. Yeah. And every five to six days, it's crazy. Uh, and we come over here. We have our biodegradables over here, and next we get into some of the pro other products that I sell. The different water dishes, the different supplements, different seed pods, nut pods. And of course, over here, we have our Pangea diets um, and all my specialized diets as well. My bug grub, my springtail grub, and my uh, universal fly media, uh, which is uh, just now uh, made its way into Canada a couple months ago. And it just had uh, my Canada, Canada distributor just put another order in. So I'm working really hard to make to get more of my products into Canada. I get dozens of emails every day. It is a process, guys, but I'm closer. I'm very, very close. Uh, over here, we have uh, some more of the stuff. We have different thermometers. I have my, my chameleon pouches over here. So if you guys are unfamiliar with my chameleon pouches, we put them directly in the cage, fill them up with substrate, uh, and plant trees directly in there. And it has completely changed the way, as far as I'm concerned, as far as keeping chameleons in a captive environment, especially your old world chameleons that lay eggs. And we keep coming over here. Here we have all the fire shot in the screens, foggers, mist kings, ledges, and all of your cool little decor stuff. I am all, I am down for the glowing mushrooms. I'm not much into fake stuff, guys, but I got, I got to give it to Exoterra. They're fake skulls um, that, uh, uh, that, they, that they sell, like the crocodile skulls, all these fake skulls and all the stuff, I'm all about it. I think you know, like, it really makes some of your terrariums pop depending on how they're being used. And then we get to woods over here. I have some different sizes of ghost wood here, Malaysian driftwood, Mopani. You guys wanna see how heavy this is? Watch this. And this, this, this piece of wood is about 50 pounds. And then over here we have uh, different assorted sizes of grape wood, uh, which is probably, besides the ghost wood, one of the most popular sellers. We come over here, we have a bunch of different thermostats. 
So I have the Vivarium Electronics line, which has been doing okay. I, I'm, I'm probably gonna switch to Herb Stats real soon because I've had a lot of people asking me for the Herb Stats over these. And of course the Exoterra Thermostats, which aren't a bad product at all. Uh, they're a lot more affordable on your, you know, instead of spending $100 for a thermostat, you're spending 30, which to me, I'd rather spend 30 than 100, but it really depends on how much wattage you're running and really what you want. We have Arcadia over here. As you know, I'm one of the few people in the United States that offers Arcadia T5 UVB. I have the 6%, 12%, and 14% and all the fixtures that go with it. And then what I was most excited for, guys, are my lights. Here is what is coming to Wholesale and the Biodude.com in about a week and a half. My Glow and Grow LEDs. So. The biggest problem I have with the Tinkman lights is that if you overturn it, you break it. I changed the base on these so that way it has a reinforced brace. So you have to be a muscle man to break these lights by overturning and snapping the wires. Not only that, I changed the diodes. I changed the diodes to be smaller, but still have the same amount of output. So not only does that reduce the heat that gets put into the aluminum frame, it also makes it so that way you're not seeing your reds and your blues. Everything's coming out as one clear color. So instead of having the diodes be in a straight row, with the Tinkman lights, you can see the red. You can see the blues. You don't want to see that when you're having a terrarium. You want to see natural white light. And this gives you the perfect combination of all those colors together to be able to accomplish that. I am so excited about these. And I absolutely, I mean, I love the packaging. It took, uh, it, it, it took me and Mike's, Mike some time to, to get these done, but these are hopefully are gonna be coming into Canada. These are hopefully gonna be going all through wholesale as well as going out with every kit and offered individually on my website in about a week. As of right now, because I just made the switch, uh, it's extremely expensive. So it's one of those things like I have to do it little by little, but I am over that little point and now getting ready to do it the right way. The only other change that I made is to the smaller one, a big change. I shortened them by two inches. And the diodes are similar, but they're all mixed spectrum. The reason I shortened the length is so that way they fit in Exoterra and Zoom Ed canopies. The old eight inch LEDs only fit in the Zoom Ed. And personally, I think the Exoterra ones are a little bit better and I'm actually gonna be getting them in in about two weeks. And of course we have all the different lights and heating apparatuses here. I actually sold a lot this week, so I'm actually out of some of the fixtures and everything, but you can see what I got going on here. And then of course all the substrates over here. Hydro Grow is usually up here, but again, it's Friday. You saw the line of boxes. This is actually half of what I put out on a normal Friday, which is nice. It gives me time to do things like this. Um, so, you know, we go over here and now we go over to the expansion. So I'm sure you guys remember what it looked like before. I made some big changes. So here is now the plant fulfillment center. We have all the specialized boxes for the plants. I now use specialized paper. I am missing everything to make sure the plants get packaged up appropriately. And then we expanded all the plants over to here. I am, I am always going to have a really large amount. This is William. He was actually in the Miss King video. He's my curator of flora and fauna. He takes care of all the animals here, all the terrariums and all the plants. He does a great job. I did recently start carrying on the biodude.com and here at Biodude Houston terrariums. I have the 75 gallon terrariums. I have 36 by 18 by 36s. I have every exoterra that you want that isn't smaller than 12 by 12 by 18. If you want something smaller than that from me, I got a special order. But I, um, I do ship my tanks via freight. Freight can be expensive, so it is normally tailored to larger orders. But I can ship them. Of course, I have the community pages over here as well, and all of my live moss and my botanica stuff. And you can see the plants are all spread apart here. I have a really nice group of the elephant beans that people really like. Check these out. Elephant feeds are really popular. Uh, I have duckweed culturing down here and other types of moss for the moss fusion. 
And of course, other types of tropicals, other deserts are kind of all over the place. So next, we're going to come over here and we're going to look at overflow. Now, this is where I get all the freight orders together. Freight gets put together here, and this is where all the excess overflow from manufacturing comes. Here's overflow for seed pods. Here's uh, overflow for all the substrates, the diets, the bio shot, and the screen. And then, of course, since we go through so much Sahara and so much large bags of Burma, this is how I have found to do it. I also have tank overflow here. You see one freight shipment right here that's actually going out today. It's a 24 by 18 by 24 XO with a bunch of other stuff to fill it out. I think the customer paid $325 in shipping for this pallet plus the cost of the goods. It's freight. And then we come out here and we see all the plants. So I moved all my trees outside so that way they can grow and be healthy upon your arrival. I actually sold a ton of my trees. I'm out of my, I'm out of a lot of my ravens. I got my emerald gems, my chapelleras, my bromeliads, the, um, the, the larger bronze that have the multiple pieces to them. So if you look at this, so here's the bronze that I, I sell for 20 bucks. It has six offsets to it. Good amount of stuff out here. So next we go, let's go into customer service really quick. Protected by. And in here, a lot of customers come over here, and a lot of the first time that they come in, they see Amber. A lot of you guys know Amber. She's one of my uh, one of my best here. She's a customer service uh, associate here. And then here are some of my springtails and isopods, earwigs, and other stuff that I'm culturing for sale. Here in the next few weeks, the Biodutes Houston's getting a huge feeder upgrade. I'm going to be selling, of course, the springtails and isopods, which are going to be opening up for shipping, most likely in October. Um, I'll also be offering earwigs, dermis dead beetles, uh, dubias, superworms, waxworms, a lot of different stuff. I have it here, but I've been able to breed the stuff myself or buy it in bulk to offer you guys significantly lower prices than the timberline prices that I was being forced to use earlier. Uh, of course, here's my small education station. Um, I'm continually working on getting more. So here's one, my herbivore and omnivore plant guide. This pretty much shows you what healthy edibles you can use with in your bioactive terrariums that, that you're keeping animals that like to graze. So we come over here and here are some of my other terrariums. So in here are my Borneo ear frogs. My Borneo ear frogs, I have bred these and they are actually, they've been doing great. And if the question is, is where I can find them. I'm sure, I don't know if you guys remember this cage. This is the cage with the super grow in it. So you can see the layer is super grow. This is that same cage that I built a year and a half ago for you guys. This is what it looks like now. I love when I can give proof to my YouTubers. Let me see here. None of them are out at the moment. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you, but the water area is doing great in here. The small filter is also doing great. Over here are my carpet chameleons. You guys remember this cage? I built this cage, what, six months ago? This is what the super grow. This is what it looks like now. And let's see if we can find any. Uh, oh, look at this. Okay. I think that, yep, yep, this is my girl. So these guys are going to be getting a bigger cage soon. Um, a 24 by 18 by 24 in most likely about two to three weeks. Um, and the male is actually back here. I know, dude. What am I doing to you? I know! Oh, he's so mad. Oh. <laughs> I love my carpets. Down here are my dumpies. So... This enclosure, I can't tell you how old this substrate is. I've been using it since I started Genesis Exotics and as I've been continually upgrading. There are so many isopods and bugs and other stuff in here. So here's one of my dumpies. I've had this group now for probably like six or seven years. Uh, I have six of them and I, I love them. I love the dumpies and they always look like they're judging you with you with their fat, lazy demeanor crossing their, their fingers. I love them. Over here, we have my super tiger leg monkey frogs, which I have bred, but I've gotten two babies out of them. But I didn't have much luck 
raising those babies. So I have a small waterfall in here, as you can see, coming out of the cork tube um, to help stimulate, uh, you know, for the girls to lay some eggs for me and the males to breed, especially when the thunderstorms come on through here and the barometric, chain, the barometric pressure drops, which it's great for being down here in Texas because when the rainstorms come, they, they come full force. And if I could find some for you, I would show you, but it looks like they're dug in. It's okay. We have my subalogies right here, my waxy monkey tree frogs I purchased from Michael Novi in 2008. So these guys, I love them. I want to believe. That's what I think with aliens. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. All right, buddy, here you go. So these are actually two females. Don't have any males. I've been looking for males and they're very hard to find. Over here are my red-eye tree frogs. This group I've also had. So this is my original group that I purchased from Strictly Reptile. I think it was Strictly, um, out of Costa Rica. So the Costa Rica ban went in place in like 1982. I got them from a place called That Fish Place, which I was told came from Costa Rica back in 2004. And this is that same group. This group has probably produced close to four or 5,000 babies for me. They are all life stages in this terrarium. So we have a younger juvenile right here wake him up he's like wait wait so one thing with red-eye tree frogs is that you can honestly look at them and tell the locale so with Costa Ricans they have that that really light neon green with the blue whereas your Nicaraguans Panamanians have a lot more of a blue hueish to their green so here's another one of my males and let me see I have a small filter running in here and this water is dark, but I can straight up tell you there's at least two dozen tadpoles in here. And let's see if I can pull up any babies because I know that there's babies in here too, because, well, I don't want to stress them out too much, so. And then down below here, we have two of my Brooksy Eye King snakes. I have a male and a female that I know that we're never going to find. Uh, like the corns, they have a huge network of tunnels down here uh, that they commonly use, and they've been doing great for me. I purchased them about a year ago at NARBC, and they're now a little bit older. And look, a baby red eye just jumped out of the water. Just look at that. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, that pretty much covers the customer service area. Um, Amber always does such a great job. Always, we always keep this room as welcoming as possible. So now I'll show you a really brief, brief, brief tour of my manufacturing. Because of course, with all my trade secrets, I wouldn't be anywhere and giving myself a if it wasn't for me figuring out doing how I do. So. So this room, we're actually working on, uh, the Ackies are getting a new cage here any day. I ended up pulling out one of my girls and put her in, put, putting her in something separate just to make sure that we're not going to be having any um, issues in the, you know, with her with the, being cramped in with the other two. But they need to come out of this enclosure. It's entirely too small and I hope by the end of next week they will have the enclosure that they need. Uh, that's that's the plan and you can see over here you see Brittany she is my floor manager for shipping and receiving uh, she's been doing a great job she stays on top making sure that orders are getting out on time my employees are following the proper protocols to make sure that everything gets done in the way that I needed to get done to make sure that you guys get some of the best reptile products available in the market uh, and then as far as the manufacturing goes out here is Joel and Reese. Joel is my part-timer, Reese is one of my full-timers. And here we're making, bagging up some universal media. And Joel's over here bagging up some firma. And you can see the big cement mixers that we use. Those cement mixers are running 24 hours a day. 
uh, 24 hours a day. Seven hours a day. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not here for 24 hours. And guys, again, I just want to give you a tour about, about the, let you guys know how I'm doing. We've got seven, seven full-timers, two part-timers, and things have been going great. I'm really looking forward to continually build my wholesale end, continuing to work my way into Canada, and continue to offer some of the best products for our scaly and slimy pets. The Dudabides.